Welcome to Storytime Sunday 27. Um, the second Storytime Sunday for the day. I said I'd be back this afternoon and here I am. Um, Okay, so, so let's go. It'll take me a minute to get it up. So bear with me. If you're wondering what I'm singing, it's bits and pieces of the song Authority by Elevation Worship. Um, it's on their new Graves into Gardens album and it's awesome. The whole album is awesome. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm singing. So this story is called Death After Life and it's episode 27 of Storytime Sunday. So enjoy this. It's going to be like the other one was before. It's, it's already recorded. Um, all I need to do is play it and then I'll come back after the story is done. Enjoy Death After Life. Welcome to Storytime Sunday, episode 28. This story is called Death After Life. Um, and it's a story about this rich woman. She's about like 40, she's about like 41 or 42. And she has, um, it starts off with her coming into the doctor's office 
on and the doctor telling her that she has cancer and he is going to um, make a referral to an oncologist and the oncologist that he makes the referral to his name is Sean Templeton and Sean is one of the biggest oncologists in the country um, the, the cancers that no other doctor can figure out uh, how to treat he can treat um, but um, her cancer is so um, advanced it's stage four and it's one of the worst type of cancer that's very aggressive and she and he it's not treatable um, oh it is treatable with chemo but it's the uh, remission rate for this type of cancer is totally kind of zero but he still treats her and then and Sean is like he's a really busy doctor like he works long hours he's single but um he kind of is um he kind of dates around but like all the women he he dates are kind of plastic and kind of um boring and selfish and self-absorbed into looks and money and into his looks and money and nobody's really going out with him for him but that's okay because he works 12 hour days and you know and deals with complex uh, cancer patients so um when okay when he sees this person, uh, she is cancer, but she's so bubbly, so energetic that he can't believe she just got the news that she has cancer. Like, it's just unbelievable. This person is so positive and whatever. And then he's explaining her to her treatment options and, you know, all that stuff. And then after her appointment, she goes outside of um, the office and she is like to wait for a ride. Now he thinks that it's probably her husband or a friend or something. Because usually when people are going through cancer, they have family, they have friends, they have people around them to support them so and he sees her um uh waiting for, and he thinks it's for friends but it turns out that it's for a taxi and he figures okay maybe her friend her family couldn't make it or maybe she can find anyone to take her so at her next appointment which is her first chemo appointment uh he again she does chemo and again she comes in a taxi and then she goes to her chemo and then after her chemo is finished uh, he sees her and she's and he's like how did it go He's like, I'm tired, but it went well, and stuff went well. I'm really positive, really upbeat, and he, and he leaves, and he comes out, and he sees her waiting, uh, and he, and he thinks that it's going to be like friends or family. He sees her waiting, and, and jump, and then, and he sees a taxi go come to the curb and uh, to to um, take her home again for the second week in a row, um, and then I 
So the third week, when she's finished, she comes in a taxi, leaves it. Uh, and then she leaves in a taxi. He's like, how did it go today? She's like, it went great. I'm tired. And I'm a bit sick, but it's to be expected. Um, and then, uh, like, so this time when her taxi pulls up, um, he looks out the window, her taxi p pulls up, and uh, he decides to follow her, although, like, to make sure she's all right, he can sense that something is wrong. And what happens is that he, he goes to her house, and he's about to knock on the door, and he feels like an idiot because he's not supposed to be doing this. He's just her oncologist, but there's something about her because she's so positive and full of life and whatever. Um, that he really, he really is just so kind of attached to her. He's about to knock on the door and he realizes that looking through the window, um, she's all by herself. It's a clean house. It's, it's kind of run down though, small, but clean. He realizes that she's all by herself that, you know, that she's barely, um, she makes some, like, soup or, like, um, some frozen meals, and a frozen meal, and just goes to bed, and she's just looking pale, and she's sick, and she has, like, a bar bucket, and she lives alone, but from her charts, she's the rich she's a rich person so she's like he's like how is this possible um and and the next week when she goes for her chemo um before like he requests for his secretary to schedule an appointment so he could talk to her um he's like um, forgive, forgive me for doing this, this was totally out of line, but I was worried about you last week, so, because I've seen you always come and go home in a taxi, and no one with you, no one to take you, no one takes you here, you always come home and, uh, you always come here and, and go in a taxi. So I was worried, so I kind of followed, followed you, and I saw where you live, and I saw your, you know, house, and I was worried. And she said, she said, now you know the truth. Um, he says, well, I thought you... I thought your your family was rich and um, was well off. And he says, why are you alone if you have a stepmother and stepsisters uh, that could be with you, that could help you, that could help you get through this difficult time? And and he says, forgive me if I'm overstepping, I'm just concerned. And he, and she's like, oh, don't worry about it. Uh, she's like, um, my dad, when he was alive, he was the greatest person ever. But when my mom died, he was so lonely and thought I needed a mother figure. So he married my stepmother. She she seemed nice enough but but after he died she wasn't very nice at all. And her step monsters and she says, Oh, I'm sorry. 
My stepsisters were even worse. They called me fat all the time. They, you know, picked on me, teased me, said I wouldn't be anything, said I, they, they were just all, they were just all crazy and they took my father's money that was meant for me they took it and spent it all on themselves and I got nothing and um, in high school there was this guy I really liked and I wasn't the kind of girl that really had many friends so when he bumped into me and started talking to me I thought it might have been a joke, but, but, um, ever so slowly, he met me after school every day and we talked, and eventually we started dating. He was the greatest guy in the world, I thought, so we, we started dating, we dated for three years all through high school. And he defended me and whatever, he was the sweetest guy. And then, um, I told him we hadn't had, uh, had sex yet, but I told him, um, that I loved him and I wanted to I wanted to take our relationship further on prom night and um, he said, are you sure, are you sure you're ready? And, and I kissed him and we agreed that prom night was the night we were going to go all the way and I got a nice nightgown and I got myself on birth control. I got condoms, I got ready for the night, and I got my prom dress, looking forward to everything. And my sisters at that time were so nice, they had never been so nice to me. And I thought we were, we were turning a corner. I was finally going to have sisters, I was finally going to have a bo boyfriend, I was finally going to have a wife. But what happened was when the he was crowned prom king and then when the prom was over we went we went upstairs to the to the room we had books and I we started kissing and I said hold on a second and then I went in the room and put on my negligee that I had bought and I came out and the whole student body was was in our room and there I was with a little tiny negligee and people were laughing and taking pictures and all that stuff and I was so humiliated I went back there and I ran out of there and never spoke to anyone since. It turned out that while, while he was date, dating me, he was not only dating one of my sisters, but getting paid to date me by her. I never felt so humiliated in all my life. So I ran out of there and never spoke to any of them since. They, they don't know I have cancer because they wouldn't care. And this, when she was telling Sean the story, he couldn't believe what had happened. Uh, and um, he's like, that was years ago. Maybe they had... Maybe they've changed. He's like, she's like, well, you can try. 
but I don't think they changed. Um, but be my guess, and she gives him the numbers, and the next day he calls, and one sister says she's too busy um, uh, planning a uh, planning a party, and um, when she says when he says hello, my name is Doctor Sean So and So. Um, I'm here to talk to you about your, about your sister, and he said, and she said, oh, what's wrong with so and so? What's wrong with so and so? Meaning the other stepsister, and he's like, oh, nothing. I'm here to talk to you about, about um, I forget the name I gave her. I'm here to talk to you about, um. Marilyn, and she's like, Marilyn, what did she do now, and how much is it going to cost us? And he's like, I think, he's like, I think you need to come into my office. Uh, and he's like, doc, she's like, doctor, I'm not going to waste time on her. Tell me now over the phone or I'm hanging up. And he's, he's like, Marilyn has cancer. And he's like, oh, oh, well, she might have brought it on herself with what she's been eating. You know she eats like a pig. She doesn't eat healthy at all. And he's like, Dr. Sean, I have got to go. And the same thing when, she, when he called her stepmother, um, and tells him, oh, you're, I have news to, to share with your daughter. Oh, and she mentioned her two stepdaughters, and he's like, no, um, this is about Marilyn. And, and he's like, and she's like, oh, um, what did that fat pig do now? Got herself knocked up and really mean. He's like, no, she has cancer. And he's like, and the stepmother laughs, he's like, you're interrupting me for that fat pig has cancer. She deserves to die because of what she put me through. He says, call me back when you have some real news to share. And and she hanging up the phone, and her other sister says, "Doctor, I'm in. I'm in Bolivia. I'm with children that really need my help. My sister refuses to to get any help or whatever. My sister is fat. She needs to lose weight, and really mean as well." I'm here to take care of children who really need my help. And then she says, thank you, doctor. And after that, those three phone calls, he's so drained and so... And so far learned that he leaves for the day. And at night, laying in his big comfortable bed, he decides that since she has no one there for her, since her parents died and her brother, her stepmother and stepsisters are so mean and um, hard to get along with, um, he decides that he is going to uh, be, be there for her. And, um, and he decides that not only he, is he going to be there for her, but he's going to quit his job and look after her because he, he now comes to the, 
Can you please hear me? And that she's starting to fall in love with her. And he can't be her doctor and have these sort of feelings. So he decides to resign from being a doctor and on college he decides to leave his six figure, seven figure salary to take care of her. Um, and he wants to make sure that she has someone. So when she goes in the next week, there's another doctor um, taking his place. And she's so devastated and distraught that this doctor that she really liked and was starting to love left. And she thinks that he left because of her. And in, in a bad way, she thinks that he left because he didn't want to see her anymore. And, um, and that night, she cries because another person didn't love her. And she was wondering, why is she so unlovable? And um, he, the next day, she gets a card at her door and breakfast delivered. And she eats the breakfast. And then after she eats breakfast, she gets another card. And it's like a scavenger hunt. And the card gets her clothes and like it's like at each stop she gets another card. She goes shopping, she gets her nails done, she gets her hair done, she you know, it looks really nice. And then she goes for dinner. Uh, and then when she goes for dinner and she's like, who's doing this? Because all day she's been getting this, like, on the scavenger hunt. And at dinner, she sees him waiting for her. And then he, he says, I quit my job because I'm falling in love with you. And I can't be your doctor and your boyfriend at the same time. And um, she said, he says, hopefully I won't be your boyfriend for long. And he, and he um, puts out a velvet box uh, where, um, where it's a ring inside it. And he asks her to marry him. And then the last stop is at the church where they get married. And um, and then earlier that day she got some she got some sexy lady things and she she entered the hotel room with loads and loads of flowers and rose petals on the bed and it was like the prom night she always wanted to have with dancing and no after the wedding they went to a place
after the after the ceremony. After the wedding ceremony, they went to a place decorated with balloons and it said in the class of whatever class she graduated from. And they danced and they had food, they had prom food like chips and other stuff like a high school prom. And then after the prom, uh, he... And he took her to a hotel and it was like beautiful, like beautiful flowers and all that stuff to, to, redo, to, to redo that night that was so terrible. And, and they had their wedding night and it was beautiful and they woke up the next day and and she said, I can't believe you married me. <laughs> she like, believe it. She's like, and at, like ever since her, her parents died, she made a list of everything she wanted to do. So, so they, every day, they did something on that list, whether it was eating the park or whether it was like, you know, to do, to binge watch all day or to stay in bed all day. And there was one time where they were supposed to go some, they were supposed to go to Paris, but but she, she started to feel sick and then what happened was when she started to feel sick, she collapsed and went to the hospital and then her, her husband took her to the hospital. And it turned out that um, her body had shut down and her stepsisters had fi found out that she was married to uh, one of the biggest doctors in the city and they tried, they uh, wanted to get close to her, not because of her, but because of him. But he said, you're not getting close to my wife, you're not going to upset her. For years, all you've done was abuse her and take her money and make her feel worth it, worth, worthless. But I'm not letting you do that to my wife. So you, you can leave or I'll, I'll have someone escort you out. And, um, And then he went back into the room to be with his wife. And before she died, she said that, that she wanted um, to create an organization that would not only grant wishes for people, but have people that can have anyone link them up with people that could support them through cancer whether they live or die 
And so, after she unfortunately died, um, her husband made that happen. And, because before he met her, he was dead. But, dead inside. All he did was work and go out with meaningless women. But when he met her, going to the most tragic of circumstances, uh, he, she showed him what it was like to really live and really have a positive attitude, despite the fact that she, she had such a crappy life. She had parents. She had a stepmother and stepsisters that didn't love her. She had um, parents that died. Instead of looking at it as a bad thing, she let it. She saw the good in it. And he taught, and she taught him a lot. So, thank you for joining me on the Storytime Sunday. I really appreciate it. Talk, talk to you later. Bye. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed Storytime Sunday 27. I know on the recording it said 28, but that was a mistake. This is Storytime Sunday 27. Next week will be 28. Um, have a great afternoon, you guys. Love you. God bless.